Welcome back. In the previous episode, I introduced the idea of upgrading from ASP.NET to ASP.NET Core on .NET 7 and promised that over the next several videos, we're going to go through the end-to-end -end process of what it takes to do that upgrade. But before we dive into all those details, I wanted to pause and talk about why you might want to upgrade. What benefits are there in going to .NET 7? And so to help us with that conversation, I have a special guest today. We have Olio with us, who's a PM on the .NET team and is going to walk us hey. through all the great things that you get when you move from .NET Framework to .NET 7 so that you can understand uh, what the motivation would be behind doing this sort of upgrade at all. So welcome, Olia. It's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Absolutely. Super excited to be here and talk about the latest versions of .NET and why you should upgrade to them. Yes. Awesome. I'm I'm uh, anxious to hear that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put your, your slides up and I'll let you go ahead and, and walk us through all of the reasons for, for moving to .NET 7. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And one small thing before we jump to all the benefits that latest.net has to offer i wanted to clarify a few things because it's still confusing and i still keep hearing those questions there is dotnet framework there is dotnet core there's also uh, mono like what dotnet should i use how are they related yeah. uh, and uh, to very quickly touch base on that dotnet framework that's the old framework that we have had for many years you probably all know what that is and uh, recently uh, about six years ago, we added .NET Core. That is a new open source cross-platform platform. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, Mono for Xamarin, and there is also .NET Standard. .NET Standard is not a platform, but an interface. But if the API is present in .NET Standard, it means it has implementation in both .NET Framework and .NET Core. So for compatibility reasons, you can use .NET Standard to make sure your code can be used from any applications. And we received the feedback that that's too many .NETs. It's very confusing what to choose. And yeah. we picked best uh, APIs, best things from every platform. And we created a new one that is called just .NET. So we removed words framework, words core, and we just called it .NET. And .NET is the platform going forward. That's our future. And we started uh, versioning from number five to emphasize that that's the latest platform. It's bigger than .NET Framework 4.8. It's bigger than .NET Core 3.1. And that is the platform going forward. You probably have noticed there is a little gray box .NET standard is still standing there. So what is up with that? Moving forward, of course, we have one .NET, so we don't need compatibility. and you should use .NET, .NET 7, .NET 8, .NET 9, etc. But there are still plenty of applications written in .NET Framework and .NET Core, and some developers prefer to leave them there. And to be compatible with those applications, you can use .NET Standard. And especially for cases if you're developing a control library or uh, some very popular NuGet package, and you have users all over the place from .NET Framework, .NET Core, different versions of .NET. In that case, you probably want to get that breadth and you want to use .NET Standard to be uh, compatible with all those applications. At the same time, if you want some new features from .NET 7 or .NET 8, you can multi-target and target .NET 7, 8 as well. And this way you will get the best things from bo both worlds. All right. Awesome. Another confusion point is about ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core. Sometimes when I'm talking about .NET 6 and then I talk about ASP.NET Core, uh, people are getting confused. There is so Core or .NET 6. And here's the thing. Uh, for .NET Framework, we had ASP.NET Core, right? And then when we created .NET Core, we had a library. We named it ASP.NET Core. It's a completely new library, modern, amazing library. And uh, moving forward, we built .NET 5 and .NET 6 based on .NET Core. So you can think of .NET 5 as the next version of .NET Core in a way. And the name of the ASP.NET Core still remained ASP.NET Core. So when 
We're talking about ISP.NET. That's the applications that are targeting .NET Framework. When we're talking about ISP.NET Core, those apps can target .NET Core, .NET 5, .NET 6, .NET 8, and so on, the latest .NETs. And now, as we clarified that, I'm super excited to talk about what are the benefits of the latest .NET and why you should upgrade to ASP.NET Core. Well, there is so many and you can see them all in the boxes, but I wanted to highlight my top ones. And uh, actually, before highlighting them, I want to show an article where you can read about all of them. Hmm. And let me bring it to the screen. Uh, so if you go to learn.microsoft.com, ASP.NET Core, Introduction to ASP.NET Core, or just search for this name, you can find an article that talks about ASP.NET Core, and here you see all the benefits of mm. ASP.NET Core. So if I don't mention something today, you can find everything here. And I highly recommend checking it out. I'm sure you will find something that will delight specifically you. But as for me, the top reason to move forward is performance. Performance is extremely important, and we've made so many improvements in this area. Moving from .NET framework and then with every next version of .NET, we committed lots and lots of PRs uh, related specifically to performance improvements. And in .NET 7, we got more than a thousand PRs just for performance improvements in BCL and all over the place uh, regarding every area. And my coworker, Steven, every time we release a new .NET, he publishes a blog post, performance improvements in .NET Core 1, 2, 3, .NET 5, etc. And this year, his blog post has more than 200 pages. But to summarize it very quickly, .NET 7 is fast, really fast. It's the fastest .NET that ever existed. And if we compare .NET to uh, com existing competitors such as Java Servlet or Node.js, you can see that it's much, much faster. In fact, it's 11 times faster than Node.js. So that's a great reason to make your applications super fast and productive. Next. Uh, thing that I absolutely love about ASP.NET Core and the latest .NETs is the cross-platform. ASP.NET is cross-platform, while ASP.NET, uh, sorry, ASP.NET Core is cross-platform, while ASP.NET is Windows only. So mm -hmm. now you can build, uh, deploy, run applications on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Uh, there are also many more reasons to upgrade to the latest .NET, and one of them if you're considering uh, moving your application to microservices and make it more productive, ISP.NET Core is the perfect solution for you because it was designed to be a lightweight, modular, and extensible framework that is perfect for microservices. You also, with the latest.NET, you'll get the latest language features and API features. And with .NET 7, you'll get C Sharp 11 with a minimalistic design and many other great things. And also ecosystem. When you're on the latest.NET, you have access to the latest NuGet libraries, uh, tools, components, controls, etc. So you can benefit from all the latest thing, things that are available there. And to summarize, .NET is the platform going forward. .NET Framework will still be there, but it will release security updates, and that's about it. All development will be happening in .NET. And .NET 7, .NET 8, .NET 9 are the platforms that I highly recommend to target because that's where all our effort is focused. And we at Microsoft also are uh, taking advantage of upgrading to the latest .NETs. And for example, when we upgraded Microsoft Graph from .NET Framework to .NET 6, we noticed 91% op operational cost reduction and 37% of CPU reduction. For Azure Active Directory, we saw over 50% app efficiency when we moved to .NET 6. And you can also see that very popular apps such as Microsoft Teams, Azure Cosmos DB, Exchange Online, Azure App Services, we all migrated them to .NET 7 and we were impressed how much better they got by simply retargeting them to the latest .NET. 
So that is why I'm recommending to upgrade your applications to the latest.net. With that, that's it. And please uh, let us know what else do you need. Give us feedback. You can always reach out to me on Twitter. And we're investing heavily in building tooling for upgrades. So if you have any feedback in that area, I would be very interested to hear that. Was that thank you so much mike back to you all right awesome thank you olia that's that's uh really cool um yeah i mean i was gonna mention my own favorite reasons but you already covered them all like performance oh, the i'm so call. sorry no, no no that's great like that was like you just covered all of it um and i do like that you called out that dotnet framework is still supported because sometimes we get people wondering well do like is dotnet framework not going to be supported anymore do i have to move and of course like you said the answer is that dotnet framework is still supported. It, it will be indefinitely. It's just that all of the new innovations happening in .NET now, in .NET 6, .NET 7, and so on. And right. so that's where you want to be for the future. So yeah. And just to add to that, of course, yeah, you can stay on .NET Framework, but by staying on .NET Framework, you're increasing that gap between where you are and where the development happening right now today, mm -hmm. right? So if in the future you decide to move, it will be harder because the gap right. is bigger. So my recommendation today, at least check out, is it easy or hard for you to migrate? Maybe it's easy. And again, there is a tooling. We have Upgrade Assistant in Visual mm -hmm. Studio. We have .NET Upgrade Planner that can help you evaluate how hard it will be to migrate. Maybe it's not that hard and maybe it's just worth doing it today. Yep. Of course, I'm biased. My opinion is biased, <laughs> but yeah. No, I, I think that's great <laughs> advice. And and that actually transitions great. In the, in the following videos now, we're going to actually get, take a sample application and we're going to go through the process of upgrading. We're going to use all those tools. We're going to look at uh, .NET Upgrade Planner for getting ready. We're going to look at .NET Upgrade Assistant, both the way that you can use it from the command line and now from Visual Studio as well, which is a great experience. And we'll, we'll use those tools. We've got some helper libraries like system web adapters and all of that fits together to make a, a collection of tools that that really do help you as you go through that process of moving. So um, that's that's what we're going to be covering in the in, in the coming video. So I hope everyone who's watching this will come back and check those out. Um, but I think we're done with this one. So thank you so much, Olia. I really appreciate you coming and just sharing uh, all of your knowledge about .NET and uh, what it is that people might want to look at when they think about moving to to .NET seven. All right. Absolutely. My pleasure. Happy coding. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.